how to play 3000% faster in just 10 minutes. I know what you're thinking, but hear me out. Let's say you're learning a new scale. You want to be able to play it quickly and accurately. If you can play this very slow version of the scale, you can learn to play this very fast version. And there's a practice technique to get you there in just 10 minutes of playing. To do that, we're going to exploit the brain's incredible ability to learn and replicate actions and reactions. There are a number of systems involved in this type of procedural memory, but most people commonly refer to this phenomenon as muscle memory. You might have heard of muscle memory. The term is often used to refer to how a specific action or series of actions can be performed very easily with little conscious effort after many repetitions. Sometimes it happens almost by accident. We memorize and reproduce catchphrases and cliches effortlessly and without intention. If you're given the cue, your brain can't help but complete the phrase, like a fish out of water. A penny saved is a penny earned. Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Maybe you didn't mean to learn this reflex, but it happened all the same through repeated exposure. Some skills take a bit more conscious effort to acquire, but become incredibly easy. Things like tying your shoes, riding a bike, driving a car, typing on a keyboard, and a huge variety of sporting skills. These are all physical skills that may feel awkward at first, but after much careful practice and repetition, they become fluid and unconscious. Memorization is similar. If you've ever had to commit a poem to memory or learn the lines in a play, you probably had to read the passage many times over. Some difficult sections might have demanded more time and attention, but eventually, saying the words became almost like a reflex. These are all examples of how the brain can be trained to do useful stuff in a way that's consistent, unconscious, and easy. It's practically a superpower. You can use this phenomenon to learn any number of interesting or useful skills, like juggling, knitting, or any number of things you'd have to learn or memorize for school or your job. But today, let's apply these techniques to learning music. The technique for getting faster at playing music is simple and intuitive, but unfortunately, it's often poorly executed. If you do it right, you're going to get faster and maintain accuracy. If you don't, well, no guarantees. Now, I do have a specific and detailed method to achieve this massive increase in speed, but it's really all based on one simple idea. Start slow and increase your tempo in very small increments while being certain to avoid errors. It's fairly obvious, but underestimated because those small increases really add up. The simple fact is that it takes a long time to play a passage at a slow tempo, but each time you increase the tempo, it also takes less time to perform that passage. So you'll have to spend more total practice time on the slower tempos because each note takes longer to play. But if you do invest time in the slower tempos, muscle memory will ensure that the faster tempos are really easy. Now, if you're unimpressed because you think you already do this, give me a few moments to explain why maybe you think you do this, but you probably don't. There are two common problems. The first is not starting at a slow enough tempo. Many musicians practice at a sort of medium tempo that isn't slow enough to allow the level of consistency, accuracy, and concentration necessary to make huge long-term gains. It's not hard to understand why people resist going so slow. It can be kind of boring. But starting at a very slow tempo allows you to focus on each note and movement of your body so you can play with 100% accuracy and confidence. The second problem is increasing tempo too quickly. Let's say you do start at a slow tempo and you play the passage pretty perfectly but then increase the tempo a bit too ambitiously, and you play it a little less perfectly. But you don't worry about the minor errors and carry on increasing the tempo. Predictably, the errors only get worse at faster tempos. Eventually, you can't increase the tempo anymore because you're just making too many mistakes. So, what do you do to avoid these problems? First, start slower than you need to. Start well below the tempo at which you can play with 100% accuracy. Second, increase the tempo in small and specific increments. That way you'll hardly notice the increases in tempo as you progress. Finally, use a metronome to help manage your tempo. A metronome, in case you're unfamiliar, is a device that dictates specific tempos which are measured in beats per minute. You can pick one up at your local music store or get an app for your phone. The metronome is going to be a crucial tool in making this practice technique work. Speaking of which, let's get to it. Let's say you're learning a new scale. Assuming you already know your fingerings, it's probably pretty easy to play that scale in whole notes at 60 beats per minute. That's pretty slow. You've got four very slow beats to look at the next note and figure out how to move your fingers before it's time to execute the next note. Whole notes at 60 beats per minute should be a very doable and even boring tempo for even a novice musician. In fact, if these first few exercises are easy and boring, that's kind of a good problem. It means you're in control and building muscle memory for the faster tempos that are yet to come. Now. 
Play that scale six more times in whole notes, but increase the tempo by 10 beats per minute each time until you get to 120 beats per minute. Note that each iteration takes a bit less time to play. By the time you complete all seven exercises, you've doubled your tempo and the whole process takes less than five minutes. It was slow and deliberate and maybe not super exciting, but it laid the foundation of familiarity to build your technique and muscle memory. Now, because playing whole notes at 120 beats per minute is the same note density as half notes at 60 beats per minute, that's the next step. Play the scale in half notes at 60 beats per minute. Then, follow the same pattern as before. Play the scale six more times, increasing the tempo by 10 beats per minute each time until you reach 120 beats per minute. The second set of exercises takes half the time as the previous set at about two and a half minutes, and you've doubled your tempo again. Just like before, half notes at 120 beats per minute is basically the same as quarter notes at 60 beats per minute. So, we switch to quarter notes and continue the same pattern as before, then repeat it again with eighth notes, and again with sixteenth notes. And that's the whole exercise. If you are able to complete this entire set of exercises, you'll have played the scale 35 times and exponentially increased your tempo by doubling it five times. That works out to 32 times faster than the original tempo, also known as 3,200%, all in less than 10 minutes of practice time. Now, this practice technique is a solid one, but it does have a few caveats. First, don't increase your tempo unless you've played the previous exercise flawlessly. You don't want to practice mistakes because you'll learn them. If you're practicing mistakes, back up a few exercises or even all the way back to the beginning and try again. It might be a bit boring, but it's worth laying a strong foundation in your brain rather than playing quickly and inaccurately. Second, the amount of progress that you can make in any single practice session is not limitless. It may not be possible to complete this whole set of exercises in one session, and you may hit a point where you can't go any faster without making errors. If you're having trouble progressing, take a break for a few hours or even a day and try again later. Of course, this technique works well in the short term, but if you want your new skill to stick long term, you'll need to review. Maybe you don't need to do the whole process every day, but it's still good to start slow and ramp up the speed. A good practice schedule might look like this. On the first day, you do all the exercises. On the second day, maybe you play slow whole notes once and then skip straight to half notes. Then do all the rest of the exercises. On day three, do slow whole notes once and slow half notes once and then do all the rest of the exercises. If all is going well, you can keep up a similar pattern with day four and five. To be a good musician is to embrace maintenance and repetition. Remember to go back to basics and play slowly if you're having any trouble at all. But also keep in mind, with this practice schedule, each day takes less time than the day before it. If you're working on learning a scale for music class, you're only looking at a few minutes of practice broken up over a few days. If you wanted to take it further, you could use this technique to learn all your major scales. Such a project might look a bit overwhelming at first, but it's really only a few hours of practice, which you could easily break up over a couple of weeks. If you already know all your major scales, think about learning a new scale, like harmonic minor or altered. Or you could use this technique to tackle a difficult passage in a piece of music you're learning. Maybe you're working on something like this. Most of it looks pretty easy, but there's that tricky part at the end. What if, instead of approaching it in the way it's written, what if you thought of it like this? Or this? It's the same notes but written differently, and it's way less intimidating. If you took it through the technique we used on the major scale, you can have it up to tempo in just a few minutes. Even if you're having trouble with this section, you can easily practice it by turning all the notes into quarter notes, or half notes. It's easy to underestimate the power of incremental improvement. You have to remember that most things are kind of boring at first, but if you endure that, the payoff can be huge. Mastering new skills takes a bit of time, but if you spend it well, maybe less time than you think. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and check the description for more videos. Thanks for watching.